Right now, I do think this is practice changing. Uh, this is really the first time that we are seeing this benefit in the maintenance setting after many failed attempts at being able to do that. Are there any particular patients that you're going to offer this to, or are you going to exclude any patients? Um, talk us through that. Yeah, it's a great question. I think um, I'll consider this and discuss it with all my patients, and I think that shared decision making is, is really important. Uh, but these are drugs we have familiarity with, yeah. and, and kind of like good Legos, we find a better way to combine them. And, and this way, we can really make sure patients get their best therapeutics early on. Uh, obviously, in their factory setting agents like terlatimab, uh, which we're going to see additional data on, um, I think are, are, are really practice changing as well. But I think as much as uh, the past couple ASCOs have been the story of non-small cell lung cancer. Yeah. This ASCO is really the story of small cell lung cancer, and whether it be maintenance, Lurby, plus Atezo, um, uh, bite strategies, and others, uh, we're able to bring these therapeutics to the patients earlier in the disease course and have positively influenced them. And, and the honest truth of it is, the earlier we treat the disease, the less likely it causes bad side effects for them, and the more likely they are to have the bone marrow reserve uh, to, to be in health to receive these treatments to keep the cancer at bay. And so I think this is another positive positive step for these patients, and I think um, it's nice to see so much positive data um, at ASCO 225 around small cell lung cancer. Uh, we've had a lot of innovation in non-small cell lung cancer. Yep. Overall cancer mortality yep. has improved based on innovations in non-small cell lung cancer. Now we're starting to see these wins in small cell lung cancer for our patients, which is great.